Ready? Here we go. Um, efficiency. Efficiency means how much bang we get for the buck. Really, it's how much work you get out compared to how much work you put in. Or how much power you get out compared to how much power you get in. Or how much energy you get out compared to how much energy you get in. How much of the energy that we are supplying goes into useful work? And how much is wasted mostly as heat and sound? Those are the two big energy wastes in our universe. The symbol for efficiency, you can write EFF as an abbreviation, but if you want to get nerdy, here's the actual symbol for efficiency. It's a Greek letter. It looks like a lowercase n handwritten with a droopy tail. This is the Greek letter eta, E-T-A, for those of you who like the Greek stuff. But if you write EFF as an abbreviation for efficiency, I'll know what you're talking about, but you know enough of me as a nerd to know, oh, I get to use Greek letters? I'm in. What are the units for efficiency? Well, percent. So some of the math 8% stuff that you did back then is going to come in handy. How do we calculate efficiency? What's the equation? I'm going to give you a long version, and then I'm going to give you an easier version. This easier version, if you want to add it to your formula sheet somewhere along the same row as all the work and power stuff is, you can. Here's the longer version. Efficiency is the work you get out divided by the work you put in, or the power that you get out divided by the power that you get in. Or the energy that you get out divided by the energy that you put in. We haven't talked yet. I haven't given you an official definition yet of what energy is. That's next lesson. but. Oh, and then what you do for all of these, this will give you a decimal. To change a decimal into a percentage, you multiply by 100. So you'll get like a 0.37 on your calculator. That's 37%. The problem is sometimes it's difficult to figure out which of these two values is the work out and which of these two values is the work in. Which of these is telling me the power out? Which of these is telling me the power in? Here's the easier version. Efficiency is always going to be the smaller number divided by the bigger number. Because we live in a universe, Mateo, where you can't be more than 100% efficient. That would violate something called the law of conservation of energy. So if you're solving a question, Ethan, and you try to tell me that your light bulb is 140% efficient, I will either laugh at you hysterically, or if you're correct, I will grovel at your feet because you will have just solved the energy crisis and the climate crisis. In about four years, you'll be rich enough to buy Bill Gates, and they'll name units after you and schools after you. Because if you give us free energy, even with our current level of technology, there's not much in terms of world problems that we can't solve. You give me free energy that doesn't pollute? Okay, I can put one of those in every internal combustion vehicle. I can put one of those in every factory. I can dramatically reduce greenhouse gases. What about world hunger, Mr. Duick? Oh, well, if I have free energy, I could have lights going on at nighttime over crops, and that way the crops would also grow at night. They could get UV sunlight during the nighttime as well, and that would increase crop yields. Yeah, I could do that. That would, that would work. What about water shortage? Oh, you give me free energy? I can use electrolysis to start desalinizing the oceans. It's just really expensive right now because it takes a lot of energy. You give me free energy? I can get fresh water from the oceans, and that's going to last us for a while. There's not much I couldn't that we couldn't engineer, even with our current level of technology, if, you didn't get, if we had free energy. But we live in a universe where that's not the case. So I wrote here, efficiency is always less than 100%, unless you plan on winning a Nobel Prize. If you do find something that's more than 100% efficient, you've invented a perpetual motion machine. If you've ever heard that term, a perpetual motion machine is something that puts out more energy, that gives you more work out than you put in.
it's impossible. Now, here is the only uh, condition here. First of all, I guess times 100%. Uh, the condition with smaller number divided by bigger number is the units have to match. Erica, you have to go watts divided by watts or joules divided by joules. Don't go watts divided by joules. Oh, they gave me joules. They gave me time. I better convert that to watts and then I can go watts divided by watts. But this is the one that I always use. I just, uh, smaller number divided by bigger number, make sure the units match. Uh, typical household light bulb, the incandescent ones, transforms energy at the rate of 60 watts. A 60 watt light bulb will use 60 joules of energy per second. Most of the energy though, is transformed into heat instead of light. You may have noticed that if, if you've ever touched a light bulb that's been on for a while, you'll burn your fingers. The old style incandescent ones. Uh, for a 60 watt light bulb, about 57 watts go into heat. Only about three watts go into light. So an incandescent bulb is only about 5% efficient. A uh, kettle might transform electric energy into the heat at a rate of about 1500 watts. Most electric appliances will have the power rating on them. Let's do one with some numbers. Example one. This would be the physics that you might use if you were an architect or an engineer deciding how big an escalator motor to put into a shopping mall or something like that. So here's the same idea. A 255 kilogram mass is being lifted straight up. You know what? Lifted is a bit of a trigger word here. At a constant speed by an electric motor. Takes the motor four seconds, lift the mass to a height of 12.5 meters. Okay. Andrew, what does A want me to find? My first thought is work equals force times distance. Work is also the area under a force versus distance graph. They didn't give me a graph, so I'm kind of worried about that. Uh, what word did I underline? So really, it's going to be the force that you exert while lifting. And Andrew, here's what we said. We said for a vertical distance in this particular situation, we often use the letter H for height. And then if you're lifting at a constant speed, what force are you lifting up with? Exactly the same force as? So MGH. And you can see on your green sheet, I hope you've already noticed, that's sort of hidden on your green sheet in this row, except it says PE equals MGH. You'll learn there's another way to think about what that work is doing in a couple of lessons from now, but MGH. So it's going to be 255 times 9.8 times 12.5. 255 kilograms, um, a pretty heavy piano. 12.5 meters, three or four stories. So we're lifting a piano up to the third or fourth floor. We should get a fairly big answer. This should take some work. What'd you get? That's my way of saying get your calculator out and practice typing. I th I'm going from memory. I didn't do this in my head. I think you get something in the 30,000s. Yeah. Andrew, can you give me the whole answer? Every single digit, please, first of all. Now, are we getting towards the end of the year? Let's do some review. Sig figs. Folks, 255. How many sig figs? Three. 12.5. How many sig figs? Three. 4.0. How many sig figs? Two. That's why the point zero is there. One would just be a four. Two. Three sig figs, two sig figs, three sig figs, two sig figs. How many sig figs should I technically go to in my answer if I'm multiplying? Technically, two. So let's do that just for review. 31,000. Uh, Andrew, units for work? Yep. Okay, good. I'm going to try and work as much little snippets of review as I can into the next lessons for a while, okay? Scientific notation, unit conversion, sig figs, all that stuff. I don't know if I'll be able to work in much relativity just yet, but we'll see. B. B. Evan, what's B want me to find? What did I find in part A? Hey, there isn't by chance an equation for power that has work in it, is there? Did they give me a time? 
Okay. Now, the other thing is they could have, instead of giving me a time, they could have given me a constant speed, and I would use force times constant speed, which force uh, gravity, as you pointed out so astutely, I think, because we're lifting up at a constant speed. But here they gave me work over time. I'm going to use my full answer of 31,237.5 divided by 4. Give me the whole answer again, please, Evan. I heard the 7. 7809.375. And then technically, uh, two sig figs because of the 4.0. And technically, this would be a two sig fig initial data point. So technically, I would go 7,800 powers measured in watt. Now, you might think to yourself, Mateo, okay, so for this crane, I'm assuming it's a crane we're using to lift this piano up, I need a 7,800 watt motor. No, no, that would be if it was 100% deficient. It is not. It turns out that the motor is using 12 kilowatts. Mateo, 12 kilowatts, how many watts is that? Yes, thank you for doing that in your head. I knew you could handle it. So 12,000 watts are what's going into the motor. What does C want me to find? Efficiency is going to be smaller number divided by the bigger number. And it seems to me the numbers I'm talking about here, Annika, are this number in watts and this number in watts. I think it's going to be 7,809.375. Hopefully most of you can just use your answer button. Divided by 12,000 times 100%. How efficient is this motor? That what it works out to? Pretty close to even, yeah? 65%. Electric motors are reasonably efficient. Some can be higher than that. Internal combustion engines, gasoline engines, are terribly inefficient. A lot of their energy goes into heat. Where an electric motor, honestly, it barely gets warm enough to, that your hand can feel it. But a gasoline motor, you don't want to put your hand on the manifold of a gasoline engine. You'll burn your hand. So that's kind of a little introduction to the concept of efficiency. Let's carry it a bit further. Turn the page. Example two. A girl pushes a box along the floor for a distance of four meters. Then oh, the coefficient of friction is 0.33. Then she lifts, you know what? I'm going to underline the word lifts the box straight up 1.2 meters. Phil, what's A asking me to find? And I, I, I said minimum amount of work for a reason. You'll see why in a second. So what does it want me to find? The minimum amount of work? Here's my argument. I think two things are going on here. I think she's pushing it. That will be a force times distance work. And she's lifting it. I think what I'm going to find, if I just visualize this, is the work done in pushing it and the work done in lifting it. I think I'll just add them up. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So let's first of all try figuring out the work done by pushing it. Phil, work equals what times what? It's on your sheet. You got your green sheet in front of you. That's why I had you get it out. And by the way, stop looking at your notes for the equations. Train your eyes to look in the right place of the green sheet. So you're on the front page. Is it, they're about halfway down on the front page, yes? Ish? Yeah. And? When two letters are side by side. What, when two letters are side by side, what mathematical operation is it? Thank you. Now, Phil, they clearly gave me a distance. Four. They didn't give me a force, or did they? 
I looked at this and I said, that's Newton's, but is that the pushing force? Read very carefully. If you look at the grammar of that sentence, I don't think that's the pushing force. What is it, Jacob? Is the word that begins with letter W not work? It's the weight in Newton's. So I'm going to make a little note. The work done in pushing is going to be the force done in pushing times D. And I don't know the force done in pushing. Phil, can you read to me the second sentence in the question? Starting with the word the. No, the second sentence. Starting with the word the. Is, keep, they gave me a mu. This is a job for a free body diagram. Let's review some of that too. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do, Phil, over here. I'm going to represent the mass as a dot. Folks, what are the forces acting on this box? Get the obvious one. And this is a little strange. I'm going to write mg, but I know how big it is. Apparently, it's 300 newtons, 3 times 10 to the 2. They've already done mass times 9.8 for me. Phil, is the box sinking to the ground like quicksand? Is it flying like Superman? So I know there's a normal force pointing up. Draw it the same size as mg. Now, which force am I trying to figure out, Phil? The force of the... You know what? That's what I want to find. Folks, which force am I missing? Friction. Which way? Pointing which way? Left. Bigger, smaller, or the same size as the force of push? Here's the key idea. What word did I put in front of the word amount? Minimum, I bet you you're exactly canceling out friction and not accelerating. So I'm going to argue that friction is going to be exactly the same size as the force of the push. If I hadn't said the word minimum, you could justifiably say, hey, Mr. Duick, how do I know she isn't pushing harder? Minimum, she's just keeping it going at a constant velocity. All right. So you ready, Phil? Coming back to you. We wrote the work done by pushing is equal to the force done by pushing times distance. I don't know the force done by pushing. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the one of pushing. Which one? Nice. So my next mental leap is going to be to say I can replace this with the force of friction times distance. Friction is what times what? Oh. So now I can replace this with mu times the normal force times distance. Oh, I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force that has to be the same size as the normal force. Which one? 300 mg. You see that lovely little set of hopscotches that we did? Okay, hoping this is brushing some good cobwebs off your brain a little bit as well. So, Phil, this is a long way to say I'm pretty sure... It's going to be mu times 300 times 4, and mu is going to be 0.33. So it's going to be 0.33 times 300 times 4. This is almost going to be exactly 400, not quite, but it's going to be really close. Even? Even? 396. Units for work, Phil? Yes. And I know I'm going to use this. I'll put a box around it so I can spot it easier. That's the work done by lifting. Now, do I, now Phil, what do I need to also find? The work done... So that's the work done by pushing. Did I say lifting? Pushing. Now what do I need to find? The work done by... Okay. So that is going to be sort of hidden on your formula sheet. Andrew, what was it again? Do you remember? Work done by lifting. MGH. Gra lifting against gravity times the height, force times distance. Oh, and again, Phil, I don't actually write MG. They told me that MG worked out to 300. What's the height? I've scrolled down. What's it on your piece of paper? 
1.2. I can do this in my head. 360, yes? Yes. So, what's the minimum amount of work she did? She pushed. 396 joules. She lifted. 756? Double check me. Yeah? And it's work joules. Now, if the box was accelerating, that would mean that the force of the push was bigger than friction. She's done more work, but I just said, what's the minimum she has to do no matter what? Okay with that, Kiefer? Cool. Kiefer, what's B want me to find? they got to give me more than that. Oh, if she, ex if she uses 1,200 joules of energy, what's her efficiency? Okay, so we're going to argue that efficiency is equal to work out divided by work in, if you want a formula. It's going to be the smaller number divided by the bigger number. And I think in terms of that, it's going to be, I think, the 756 and the 1,200. I think it's going to be 756 divided by 1,200. Brendan, what'd you get? 60, even? Oh, yeah, time, I think 0.63 and then times 100. What happened to the other 27%? 37%, sorry, bad math. What happened to the other 37% of the work? That's energy. In other words... She put in 1,200 joules of work. 756 went into making this object move. What happened to the rest of the energy? It went into heat and heating up her body and making her sweat, the vast majority of it. That's how our bodies work. We're not, we're not that efficient. We give up a lot of heat, wasted energy. Uh, that's why you may have noticed if you're going for a run on a cold day, you can run way further with more energy because your body is not having to waste as much energy to cool you off. It's not having to generate as much heat. You're much more efficient running on a cool day than you are on a hot day. Example three. How many of you ever used a stair climber or an exercise bike, some kind of electric fitness machine where there's some kind of calorie counter on it? You either clip something to your finger or you enter your weight. Uh, Sorry, those are garbage. The machines aren't, but the calculations are, and I'll explain to you why in just a second. On a stair climber, a 58-kilogram person lifts their center, lifts. Yeah, you know what? On a stair climber, the work you're doing would be MGH, just like walking a set of stairs. Even though you're not going anywhere, you are doing MGH. Lifts their center of mass up 18 centimeters with each step. If they take 500 steps in 10 minutes and the muscles are 20% efficient, then, Graydon, what does A want me to find? Read it out loud. What the heck is the rate at which a person does work another name for? No, then I would have said how long. Power. Power, we defined it as the rate at which work is done. It's how fast you do work. So can you give me a one-word answer? What's A asking me to find? Starts with, yes. And my first thought is power is work over time. <clears throat> Did they give me a time in this question? Read carefully. Did they yes, get, then I know I'm on the right track with this. And if they hadn't, there's that second definition of power, which is force times constant speed. But did they give me a time in this question? I'm going to stay here. Lifting. Oh, fill MGH. Right? That was our equation for lifting over time. Here we go. Graydon, what's the mass? Good. G, 9.8. Height. Don't say 18, because I have to convert that to meters, but don't say 0.18, because that's wrong too. What's the height actually? How will I figure out the height? Jacob. 
one stair, 0.18, similar to the lab we did last day where we measured the height of one stair and then just multiplied to get the total height. It's going to be grade one stair times 500 steps. That's the height this person went through. Divided by, can you convert 10 minutes to seconds in your head? Thank you. How many watts of power is this person generating? You get 85.26. Uh, 58 decimal, how many sig figs is that? 58 with a decimal there, how many sig figs? 18.0, how many sig figs? 10.0, how many sig figs? 500, technically how many sig figs? Careful. One. Technically, I should say 90, one sig fig, not going to bother. Power is measured in watts. What if I wanted this to be three sig figs? How would I write the 500? A five, a zero, a zero, and then what? A, well, no, point zero before sig figs. Just the point. Like I did for the 58 decimal, I would go five, zero, zero, decimal, and that's my way of saying, hey, count this one to three sig figs, please. Right. All righty. B. B. Hmm. Hmm. What's B want me to find? Well, it says the rate at which the person uses food energy. This is a bit tricky. First of all, what haven't I used yet? What information have they given me that I haven't used yet? Hopefully you can spot that one. Efficiency. You know what? Let's write this. Efficiency equals power out divided by power in times 100%. I'm not going to bother writing that part. You know what? <clears throat> That's the power out. Do you know what this question, when it's saying, the rate at which the person uses food energy, you know what it's really asking me to find? How much power their body put into this. How would I get the power in by itself? Where is it right now on the, oh, I'll let take care of that. Multiply it to the other side. I'll get power in times efficiency. That equals power out. How would I get the power in by itself? What will I do with that efficiency symbol? Write it over, you say. So you're telling me that the amount of power this person put in is going to be the amount of power we got out divided by the efficiency. It's going to be 85.26 divided by 0.2. I converted the 20% to a decimal in my head. You get 426.3? Here's the problem. If you're using an electrical exercise machine and it claims to be telling you how many calories you burned or how many watts of power you generated, if it does not know how efficient your metabolism is, the number it's giving you is a complete guess. They're probably using an average value for a person of your mass, because some of them do ask for your mass. If you have to enter that in, that's at least a little better, but they're taking an average value. If you're a triathlete, you would probably be using far less power, because your body would be way more efficient. You might not even work up a sweat. If you've never exercised in your life and you're overweight, you're probably going to be at like 0.1% efficiency. You're going to be giving off a lot of the energy as heat. So those machines, 
take whatever values they give you with a serious grain of salt. Don't think to yourself, oh, it says that I burned 1,300 calories, so I can go eat a 1,300 calorie dessert and I'll break even. That number is nothing to do. It's totally inaccurate. Next page. Last one. An internal combustion engine, a gasoline engine, it's about 18% efficient. This means that of the gasoline explosive contained chemical energy, only about 18% of the energy makes the car go forward. The other 72% of the energy is wasted as heat and sound. If a 200 horsepower engine is used for two hours, A, how many watts is this motor rated for? Okay, I can do that. I think. I hope. John, what's they asking me to find? And they told me 200 horsepower. And then what does it say in brackets, John? They want me to do a unit conversion. What's the first thing I'm going to do? What do I always do when I do a unit conversion? Write down what they? Yeah, okay. They gave me 200 horsepower. And then, John, go times, draw a fraction bar. I want horsepower to cancel, John. Where am I going to put it in the second fraction if I want it to cancel? On the? Yep. And I want watts left behind on the top. And I guess the conversion factor is 750 watts divided by is the same as one horsepower. And I get a one of five and four zeros. I got 150,000 watts of power. Cool. Hmm. What's B want me to find? Yeah. Um, what do I find in part A? Which power? And it said, does it produce in that time? Did they give me a time in the question, John? You have to look for it, but I think they did. Two hours? Okay, on your green sheet, can you find me an equation that has power and time in it? There is one. Yep. Yep. You know what? I think when it says how much motion energy in joules, work is in joules. They want me to find the work. How would I get the W by itself? How would I move that T over? Matt, how will I move the T over? So if I hear you correctly, and you tell, yeah, I think I do. Not only is work equal to force times distance, not only is it the area under force resistance graph, apparently work is also power times time. I can figure that out. It's going to be 150,000 times. Does anybody remember, how do I change hours to seconds? Does anybody remember how many seconds there are in one hour? 3,600. If you've forgotten that, you could just go 2 times by 60 to get it to minutes and times by 60 to get it to seconds. But 60 times 60 is 3,600. You're going to get an answer, and it's big enough that I'm going to say it's time to move it into scientific notation. And you know what? It's a good chance to review scientific notation. I'm going to write 1.08. I'm not going to write the rest of the zeros. I'm going to move the decimal to between the 1 and the 0. So if I start here and I count, it's going to be 1.08 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Double check me. But I'm going to get 1.08 times 10 to the 9th joules. Is that correct? Why must that be wrong? Why is that not the answer? Because it's not.
Nope. Annika, can you read to me from part B the first four words, everything up to and including the little bracket? This is not the motion energy, this is the total energy. How much of that total energy goes into forward motion as a percentage? So now I need to find 18% of this. So I'm going to make a little note in our notes so that when you're studying later, you know what our thinking is. I'm going to say, now find 18% of W. Remember I told you, Math 8. You did a bunch of these in Math 8. Who remembers? How do you find the percent of a number? So you ready for stupid tricks of the trade? Andrew, I picked on you a whole bunch, sorry. Ram, what word is that right there? If I say five and six, that means add. If I say three, take away two, that means minus. What does the word of mean to do in math? Let me know. This is one worth putting in your back pocket because you'll see it very often. It's always multiply unless the word of occurs as to the power of, then it's an exponent. Five, to the power of three, that's an exponent. But I've tried every other place that I've seen the word of show up in math, and every time I can say, oh, just stick a times in for there. So it's going to be 18% times this answer, except how do I do math with a percent? I don't. I have to change it back to a. So what's 18% as a decimal? Remember your math eight? Remember when school seemed so easy, you were all shorter? Some of you had shorter hair. Sorry, it slipped out. Right? Okay, so the work done to get this car moving is going to be 0.18 times 1.08 times 10 to the ninth. 18% of that. Did it ever teach you that of means multiply? In math 10. Oh boy, that's something I was. Because half the questions in math 8 find 40% of 17. 0.4 times 17. Find 81% of 19. Of means multiply. So times 0.18. You get uh, a 1, a 9, two fours, and five zeros. I'm going to write this in scientific notation as well 1.944 times 10 to the, count carefully, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I think I get times 10 to the 8th, and it's work, so it's joules. We started out with 1.08 times 10 to the 9th joules, but in terms of making the car move, we only used 1.944 times 10 to the 8th joules. C. How much energy is wasted? How can I figure out how much energy is wasted? Yeah, minus this time, not divided by the work that was wasted is going to be how much we put in. This is be how much gasoline fuel you used minus how much went into making this car go forwards. Whatever's left over went into sound and the heat. Cars, are, especially internal combustion engines, are terribly inefficient. They get very, very hot, and you can hear them from kilometers away. Wastes of energy. 1.08 times 10 to the ninth minus, haha, answer button. And I get 8.856 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 8. Where'd that energy go? Sound and heat. <clears throat> Does anybody here, uh, family or you, own an electric vehicle or a hybrid? No one in this class. You, oh, you do? What are they? What, what kind of vehicle? Prius, which which has done quite well. It was one of the original hybrids to come out. Toyota's really engineered that well. Anybody have a fully electric vehicle, like a plug-in? 
a few years ago, I took a Tesla for a test drive. If you ever get a chance, they are unicorn rainbows. They're just really nice. If I won the lottery, that's probably my first purchase right there, buying a Tesla. So they're nice cars. Uh, electric cars are the future. If for no other reason, they're so much more efficient. Even the hybrid, like the Prius, which uses a gasoline motor to create electricity for the battery, you're still coming out ahead because the battery, the electric engine in there uh, that makes the car go forwards, gives off so little heat compared to an internal combustion engine, you're coming out way ahead, sir. Way ahead. What's your homework? I'm going to be giving you lots to practice. Sorry. Here's what I assigned my other class. Uh, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Really, Mr. Do? Yep. Yeah. Some of these are tricky. You're going to have to think about it. Eight is good. You can skip nine, or as I like to say, nine. Nine. Ten, eleven, twelve. Take a look at twelve for a second, please. What's A asking you to find? You say net force, you can go F equals MA. And there is enough there to find A. I think you're going to use VF squared equals VI. Oh, no, they gave you the acceleration. Never mind, 1.25. What's B want you to find? I think you can use VF squared equals VI squared plus 280. What's C want you to find? Force times distance. What's D want you to find? Time. I think you can use VF equals VI plus AT. I like that because we're reviewing a bunch of stuff from before Christmas in one question. So I'm not saying I like this question, like this question, like this question. I am saying I'm trying to give you more and more review in the homework so that you're brushing the cobwebs off. And you'll notice we've been using a lot of that all year long anyways. So 12 and 14, please. And 15. Okay. So I skipped 13, and I skipped 9. That would be the shorter way to say it, I guess. You have the remainder of class to work on stuff from last day and to work 